All right, let's take a look at another sign here. And before I start, let me just tell you where you would see this particular sign. Well, actually, you would see this on a bus, riding a bus in Korea. Now, why would we see this on a bus? Well, once we break through all the grammar and all the words, I think you'll understand why you might see this sign on a bus. Let's start with this uh, big circle here. And if you look at this circle, the first thing you'll notice is there's a big foot. There's a big foot in the middle of this circle. And, and actually, pal, pal means foot. So this word here means foot. And this word here, joshim, the, the, the verb form of this word is joshim hada, joshim hada. And that's a verb that means to be careful. And if you're ever going to just refer to the noun form of this, this verb, this, I guess you could say this refers to uh, carefulness or, or whatever the noun of being of, of being careful is and I guess you would say it is carefulness and this is a way to say if you if you put sort of a noun before Chushin this is a way in Korea that they say be careful of be careful of this particular thing and if, if I was from England and, and I'm not I, I would translate this to mind your feet or, or, or again Korean people don't uh, really distinguish between plural and, and singular. They do sometimes, but usually with people, and they can use the word, or, or sorry, the, the particle to, to talk about pluralness, but they don't usually do it with, with random objects like feet or something like that. So this, in theory, this could mean mind your foot or mind your feet, but it's very rare that you're just talking about being careful about one foot, and usually you're talking about being careful about two feet. Now anyways, Actually, a lot of the times you'll see you'll see so for example signs in Korea that are that say mori joshin, and oftentimes they'll actually have an English translation, and very often it'll say mind your head. Now, Korea is in in terms of English, in terms of English, Korea is more American uh, based than than British English based, and it's it, it's funny because sometimes you actually do see these British terms like mind your head on a sign or something like that. But mo most of the time you'll see something like be careful of your head or be careful to not hit your head. So anyways, this particular part of the sign is just saying be careful of your feet. If we look at this full sentence here, this first word, churid mun, uh, well, mun means door. And, and actually, I'll show you the hanja character of this. Actually, these three hanja characters, these three syllables, chul, ip, and mun, these are, are all based off of uh, Chinese or, or hanja characters. And if you ever decide to learn hanja, and I, and I highly suggest that you do at, at least try to learn some of the, the very basic hanja characters, these three are, are probably in the first 20 characters of characters that you would need to know or that you'd probably come across in any hanja studying. And the hanja character for door looks something like this. Looks something like this. Door. And it's one of these ones that actually kind of looks like a door. And you actually see this a lot um, on, uh, on historical sites around Korea because there's a lot of famous gates or, or doors in Korea, historical ones. That you might see something like, you might see something like Dong De Moon. Dong De Moon. And... In this case, moon means gate or door. Day means big, and there's a hanja character for that, but I won't write it down. And dong means uh, east, and there's also so day moon, which means the west big gate. And there's also uh, nam day moon, which refers to the south big gate. And anyways, on these very historical sites, you often see them written not in Korean, but actually in hanja. So it's very common to see this in in places like this around around Korea. Now, these two words, or these two syllables, this is actually one word here, chur and mun, but these two syllables, ip and, and chur, I'll, I'll write down chur first, chur looks like this, in, in uh, Chinese it looks like this, and, and this refers to exiting. And you, you see it a lot actually written on signs for, you know, for an emergency exit or something like that, and ip looks something like this, something like that. And, um, uh, if this means to exit, and if this means to enter, actually, churipada is a verb. I'll even write this down. Churipada is a verb that, in theory, it means to, to enter and to exit. But 
it's usually more specifically, especially when it's translated, to translate to, to just enter. But in theory, you could also exit using this word. It's, it's, it's again, because it actually has the, the hundred character of exiting and entering in the same case. In theory, it means to exit and to enter, but it's more specifically used to enter something. And if you were going to say chur ib mun, you're, you're specifically referring to a door that you would enter and or exit from. And, well, that's what a door is. And mun and chur mun, they're very, very similar because a door, well, a door is meant to be to, to be used to be going in and out. So this is just really just referring to a door. And you could actually just say that this whole thing here means a door. And, and sometimes they make it more specific. Well, this is a door that's actually being going to be used to being exited and entered through. But anyways, this whole thing here means a door. This next part of the sentence here, and, and you actually see that this is in, uh, in red here. And I'll talk about why that is uh, in a second, because this is they really want to specify that it's this is actually happening and not and not something else. Now, uh, an an means inside, inside, and other similar words like this. I'll, I'll maybe I'll write I'll write them down here. Other similar words. So an means inside, inside. These are actually some of the, the the first few words that you actually might learn in Korean if you if you're just beginning to learn Korean. There's also we, which means on top of or on top. There's also words like yup, which means beside, and there's maybe a word like are, and that would mean below. These position words are very, very common for people to learn at the very beginning of their studies. Now, jok, jok is one of these very interesting nouns. In, in theory, it's a noun, but it, it's one of these nouns that actually cannot ever be by itself. And... If you're just beginning Korean, you, you really don't need to worry about all this grammar that I'm going to be talking about with joke. But uh, if you're getting into the point where you're fairly advanced, it might be interesting to you. Now, you'll always see joke either after some sort of noun and usually a, a place, referring to a place. But it can, always, it can never be used by itself. And it usually follows some sort of noun before it. But it can also be used... Uh, if it's being described by a verb. Now, if again, if you're just starting to learn Korean, that might be a little bit hard for you to understand, but you can describe nouns with verbs. And we do that in English. If I was going to say the place, which is a noun, the place in which I study or the place that I study. Well, you're describing, you're describing the place. You're describing the place with, the, with that I study. Well, what, what place is it? Well, specifically, it's the place that I, I study. And you can you can use this idea of using a verb and, and in this place of study to, to describe a noun. And you can actually use jok in those sense, senses. So for example, you can say, you, again, you can never just say jok by itself, but if you're going to say, for example, maybe I can make a sentence like saramdiri, and that would mean people. And this is this is actually the same the same tur that I saw before. Sara means person, and tur would refer, refer to people. Sara andri jo. And I actually talk about how you can use this this thing here, this nun, in order in order to describe an upcoming uh, noun, which is what it's doing here in lesson twenty six. And it's a very important lesson, and, and I, I really suggest that if you haven't uh, read that, you maybe give it a peruse through. But what's happening here is I'm actually describing this thing and in this case it's a noun but it can only be used in this particular case or in these cases where it's being described by something or in cases like this where it's actually followed uh or it's following another noun and, and this this thing here would say oh i didn't even tell you what the word joke means i'll tell you what that word means this means the direction of direction of or, or pointing or pointing in, in this particular direction or Again, pointing in this particular direction. And in this case, it's the direction of inside. Or you could just say inside or to inside or in the direction of inside. And here it's the direction that the people are going. And again, it, you, you might not understand this grammar here with none, but I'm just, I want to make this point that joke just can't be used as a regular noun. It always either has to be described by something, and that's what's happening here, or it always has to follow some sort of noun. Now, one thing that I want to add to that is actually, anchok is actually a word on its own. 
it's actually a word on its own, but you can you can put another like in, in here this this could be another noun. So for example, I'll, I'll talk about this down here. You could for example say hakyo, um, which means school, hakyo, which means school, and you could put this after it. And in this case, it's I, you, again you can't just use this by itself, but you can have a noun before it and refer to the direction of of school. Or again, like here, it, it can be described literally by using this this grammatical principle that I talked about in lesson 26. Or it, literally, if you just put a noun before it, you can talk about the direction of that noun. But in this case, technically, that's what's happening here. But if I use an joke, we joke, up, yup joke, or arit joke, all of those are actually words on their own, and they're not sort of seen as two separate nouns, as as this would be seen as two separate nouns here, where I actually have a noun, a space. And uh, this this joke that we're talking about, but I could say an joke, we joke, yup joke, and arit joke, all as actually nouns on their own, just because they're sort of these special cases where the, I guess they're very very common and they they form them into their own particular word. Another word that like like an joke, we joke, yup joke, arit joke, that's very very commonly seen where a word is formed because joke is usually used after it is. Ku, which refers to some, oh, well, I'm going to open up a whole can of worms here, but it's very hard to describe what this means. But if I, let me just simplify and just talk about this. If I say ku jo, what's that that's referring to? Ku just means that. And it, I can make a whole video just on referring to what this actually means here. But if I say ku jo, that's saying in that direction, in that direction. And again, this, this is another example where I actually have, even though I actually have joke but it's and it's following something because it can't be used on it, on its own it always has to refer to the direction and maybe I'll do this in another color because I think it's important the direction of well what direction well you have to have something before it to indicate what direction you're talking about and it could be in direction of inside in the direction of, of above or in the direction of beside or in the direction of below or in the direction that people are going or in the direction of the school or in that direction but there always has to be something before it and in this case I have in the direction of inside or just to inside let me go back to my purple here this next part this is specifically just, it's not a word this has no meaning in the sense that words have meanings but this is put on uh, things to indicate that you're talking about a direction. And of course, as I said, we're talking about a direction. So um, this is just used to indicate indicate a direction. It's a particle because you can't just leave joke on its own. You have to indicate this. You're actually referring to this as a direction. So what I have so far is the doors in the direction of inside, in the direction of inside, and what this word, this final word here, I'll, I'll write the base form of this word. The base form of this word is yolida. And you actually see the base of this this word here, and then here, and then here. And ta is taken off because ta is taken off every time you conjugate something. Now, what's added on to this is the formal way to conjugate uh, a verb, and you can either add you can either add this, which is actually what's being added in this situation, or you could add or you could add this, simnida. Now, you, you need to know which one to add in this case. If this stem, and the stem is everything you see here without ta, if this stem ends in a vowel, which this does, this thing here is a vowel, this final letter here is a vowel, then you have to add this. But if you had a word that, that if you had a, a verb that ended in a consonant, for example, if you had a, a verb mokta, and you wanted to add either this or this to it, well, mokta, the stem, the stem ends in a consonant. So you'd have to add this one to it because it's a consonant. So it would actually be mok sunida. But in this case, in this case, you have this stem ending in a vowel. So you have to add this ending to it. And this that makes it a formal way to say it. And the reason why it's a formal uh, ending is because this is bit talking to the general public. It's a, it's a sign on the bus that uh, you're talking to many people, and it's the general public, so you want to be formal in those situations. Now, I, I just want to spend a second talking about what yolida means, and I'll, I'll just tell you the meaning of it very quickly. It means to be open, to be opened. And this is actually a yolida, yolida, 
Yalida is actually a passive, passive, uh, passive verb. And I talk about passive verbs really in depth in lesson 14, and I don't want to get too into the difference between passive and active verbs uh, in this video because I actually talked about it. You might want to check lesson 14 of, of my lessons on the website, but I also have the sign video, sign video number number seven. I actually really get into the difference between churda and churida. Churida. And one of these one of these verbs is passive and one of these verbs is active. I'm just going to mention it very, very quickly here. If I have yalda, this means to be open. To be open. But yalda, yalda means to open and actually passively open something. And I would use yalda if I, the subject, I, or some person, opens let's say a door. So I could say, uh, maybe I'll do it in English because I don't want to overcomplicate it with Korean here. I could say, I open the door. And in this case, I have a subject, the object that I'm acting on, and the verb that I'm, that I'm doing. And open here would be a, a, an active thing that I'm doing. Now you could also say a sentence, a passive sentence saying, the door opens. Now in this case, well, who opened the door? I don't know who opened the door. I just know that the door opened. Now, in, in this case, what I would, because it's, there's no actual subject indi being indicating who actually opened the door, I would have to use yalida. And I have a whole lesson on this. Like I said, it's lesson 14. And there's, there's all these different types of verbs. And you can say there's a verb to turn on, but there's also a verb to be turned on. And you can see they look very similar. And there's a verb guda. And there's, there's a verb gajida, and they look very, very similar. And there's tatta and tachida, and they look very, very similar. But anyways, what's happening here is the door is opening. And it's not somebody actively opening the door. It's that the door is opening on its own. So if I add all of this together, I have the door is opening in the direction of inside the bus and I, we're talking about inside the bus because I'm riding a bus so it's the door opens in the direction of inside the bus but who cares about that well actually if you look at this that if you remember the very beginning that's why it's telling us to be careful of our feet if you've ever been on a bus sometimes where the exiting doors if here's the exiting doors and well people are standing people are standing right here and right here and sometimes these doors actually swing swing open it's very hard to draw this in 2D, but sometimes they swing open, and as they do that, they kind of they kind of move this way and move this way. And if people are standing immediately in front of the door, they can actually hit the person who's actually standing right in front of the door. Not all buses are like that, but I've been on a few buses, and obviously, of course, this one, where when these back doors open, they actually swing wide open and actually kind of they could hit people if people are standing there. So that's why this is saying, that's why this this thing is signed as saying, be careful of your feet because, because this door, this door will open or opens in the direction of inside the bus. Well, that was fun. I hope you learned a lot.